I just got done watching Sex Education Season 4, Netflix's final season for this show, and I walked away pretty damn emotional, not gonna lie. Just finished it on my couch right here, and I I teared up. I'm, I got pretty emotional by the end, and I had to take a simmer, take a breath before I jumped in front of this camera, because Sex Education for me is a show that I expected to like when I first started. It just seemed awesome. They had great cast, and it seemed like it was gonna have great humor, but by season four, what I've really noticed is that this is one of those comfort shows that has humor, heart, emotion, drama, sex, but really much what it really has at the core of it is relationships between human beings and the connection that we have. And I find that it's very rare when a show can deeply have its heart right on its chest. Now, a character you could be finding to be a villain in one season could be a absolute character that you love the next. And again, very rare where a lot of shows have that. Just like we have gotten that with Ted Lasso, we've gotten four seasons of Sex Education, which really much provided that exact same category. And season four is a ball of comfort and a ball of love from the characters and by the very end of the season while not everything that I wanted to happen happened and what even when the season had started I necessarily thought it was going to go one way never went that way so I kind of was taken back for a second but then once it kind of shifted around it put everything to full perspective that when you see from season one to season four the importance of human connection I think that's where the thematics of this show really lie and its character development and where each and every character ended up by the very end and it left me feeling satisfied and overall i walked away going this is one of my favorite things netflix has ever produced and i think season four maybe isn't my favorite season thus far but it definitely has some of my favorite moments that we've ever gotten in this show and i'm excited to talk about it make sure to leave your thoughts down below who's your favorite sex education character and make sure to hit that like subscribe button for more movie and tv content over here on a daily basis i'm just a geek and i love talking about all sorts of nerd culture so again thank you so much for clicking on this Sex education season four follows the closure of mordell secondary where otis and eric now face a new frontier their first day at cavendish sixth form college otis is nervous about setting up his new clinic and while eric is praying they won't be losers again new school is a culture shock for all the more students as they thought they were progressive but this new college is on another level there's daily yoga in the communal garden a strong sustainable vibe and a group of kids who are popular for being kind is totally thrown by the college student-led non-competitive approach while jackson is still struggling to get over cal amy tries something new by taking on an ra level and adam grapples with whether mainstream education is for him but over in the u.s one of my favorite characters personally mave is living her dream as prestigious wallace university being taught by cult author thomas malloy otis is pining after her while adjusting to not being an only child not being the only therapist on campus that's where we really much meet our first characters in the first episode and from there this is a non-spoiler review i'm not going to dive into any of the details i'm not going to give any spoiler thoughts it's very much going to be vague in the interpretations of how i talk about this final season and if you want to continue the conversation down below when the season comes out and you want to talk spoilers we can talk down there so with that said sex education i kind of came off the top seeing what the season really much made me look at as a whole with this entire show and it, i kind of feel dumb for not viewing that earlier on and specifically with shows like this and ted lasso where it really is about that human connection and that kindness of people and while there are frustrating things that characters will absolutely do in the end of the day you know that they're going to find their path and find their route there and for me looking at this asa butterfield is fantastic as otis i've always thought that he was but one thing that i've always found about his character is that it's a very i've definitely found about asa butterfield's character is that he's very frustrating at times and sometimes you just want to strangle him and point him in the right direction and you necessarily don't do that but it, that's a lot of the things with a lot of these characters in here and sex education season four finds its path very well through and starting with the performances this season i mean everyone's flawless and I feel like that every character, this is what I was really surprised by, is that every character got a story and they even touched on things that why I felt the other seasons were very progressive and specifically the way that it moved forward. They really touch on some things that I feel like no mainstream shows are touching on. It's about top surgery or other things like those. These are things that the show addresses and actually touches on the struggles and how certain people may feel going about this. 
And again, there might be shows out there that are touching on it, but nothing in the mainstream capabilities. And I view Sex Education as a mainstream show, specifically in the approach and the fan base that it has off Netflix. I really liked how this season moved each character along and touched on each character, specifically from where we had seen them from season one all the way to now and even moved forward with new characters, but never making it feel like we're just throwing in new things, new situations. It's like these progressive things have really shown about, and it's fantastic to see nonetheless. Like I mentioned, Asa Butterfield is fantastic as Otis. I really like Otis. Even if he does frustrate me, there's a lot of great stuff there, but specifically seeing how now he's having to revert and deal with not being an only child, but also not having to deal with being the only therapist on campus, like I mentioned, not gonna get more into that, but, it's a very interesting dynamic to see because, he, you know, he thought he found his calling in seasons two. You know, season one, he was kind of against it. Season two, he started to kind of follow it. And season three, he really tried to give into it. And this season, he in a way has to kind of come to terms with what is his purpose in this world, which I think is something that a lot of us go about. Everyone's lives are changing. And I feel that everyone in this season was very much, at least our main characters per se, were trying to find their purpose and how to get there and what these changes mean for them and specifically and i'm going to mispronounce some of these names so i highly I, I apologize i always do but nakti garawa who i think is just one of the shining parts in this i am so happy that he got doctor who that that's just awesome but he plays eric he's the best friend of otis and you know they've had their differences and this season there is some differences of course between them but it's very interesting to see how eric is now coming to terms with his life and where you see his character end up by the end of the season actually made me quite emotional and i really love how they played off something that we've seen developing through each and every season but this season it really takes head forth and i think again not getting into spoilers it comes about religion and of course your sexuality those are the topics that people are talking about today and again mainstream media and mainstream television shows do not touch on that whatsoever i think that only goes forward with some of the other characters that we were introduced to such as cal bowman played by dua Soleil, who i loved cal in the last season i thought cal was one of the best characters they've introduced into this show and this season alone i think cal's storyline is actually one of the most important that will really touch a lot of people in their lives and again, goes to that progressive nature of it all. I love how they touched into that. And I love how the show continues to lay out certain things where there's a character that each and every person can easily latch on themselves. The same goes for my favorite character played by Emma McKay, Maeve Wiley, who I think Maeve has gone through a very much up and downhill. And by the end of season three, I really love where they had left off Otis and Maeve. There's some twists and turns whether it comes into that, but. I think by the time we leave this character, it really goes as far to show very much grown as a person. And I think Emma McKay has really much developed one of the best personalities in this entire show. And I cannot wait to see what she does with her career after sex education. Leanne Anderson is phenomenal as Jean as always. And specifically her storyline this season is very much trying to finalize that reconnection with her son, which has been something that we've been trying to see throughout the last three seasons. But now having to deal having a newborn and her sister is now coming to town. We're not going to get into that fully, but the relationship that she has with her sister and herself and everything she's going about again will speak to a lot of mothers. And I, again, love that. This goes on and on from there. Connor Swindles, who plays Adam Groff. Wish they would have given Adam a little bit more to do in here, but I still liked his storyline. I just think he was kind of pushed to the back burner. But I do actually love what they ended up doing with his father and him primarily so i'll leave it at that we also have keeter sterling who plays jackson i think jackson's been such a big standout the last few seasons as well really much grown as a character and i think jackson goes through quite a few things in here that i wasn't anticipating for them to touch on but the way that it kind of works specifically one of his first storylines is something that i feel many people lose grasp of and maybe even like question themselves because of certain instances but again really like that i will say that there's certain things between jackson and cal this season that i don't feel everyone will be appreciative of but what i loved about this show is that it never takes the most obvious routes it never takes the most clear identical paths that would make people happy or would also just make people excited it does take more realistic approaches and i think what they did with jackson's storyline and cal's and really much everyone's 
is perfect. Amy Gibbs played by Amy Wood is phenomenal as this, as specifically how she's been dealing with this PTSD of this guy who assaulted her. Lots of important things there and she's fantastic. And realistically, she has a big storyline this season with Isaac, who I think also was great. I hated Isaac when he was first introduced. But like I mentioned at the top of this, there are characters that you're going to be introduced to at one point. Maybe you'll hate them, then you'll like them. And if we're talking about characters I used to hate, it's Mimi Keene's Ruby. I fell in love with her last season. I thought she was great. I really love the development that they gave to her character. And that development only continues here. It's sweet, it's sincere, it's phenomenal, and I think it's really much embraceive. And I think when you look at all the characters in Sex Education, I think Ruby Matthews is one of the most underrated characters out of them all. But I could sit here forever talking about the cast on and on. I really love how every person that you've come to love in Sex Education that did come back this season got a storyline. Talking about my mixed stuff, I do feel like Viv's storyline could have used a little bit more development in some cases. I even think that maybe this season could have been at least 10 episodes long. I know it's only eight episodes. That's usually how each and every one of these seasons are. And primarily the ending is about an hour and a half, but I felt like there was enough room to be touched on for at least two more episodes. As the show remains hilarious, funny, emotional, and at its core, a reminder of what human connection can do for someone personally. When you talk and discuss a show like Sex Education, the biggest pe things people are going to talk about is our love for the characters, is our sweet sincerity of all that. And walking away from this show, all I felt was charm, sweetness, and a smile on my face. And by the time the credits had rolled, I usually don't do this, but I just sat there. Just going, that's it. There's so many shows that have ended this year, and Sex Education Season 4 is one of those. Again, I think it ended in such a satisfying way. Certain things that I wish would have happened didn't, but that's also for the better, because I do like where they ended up leaving us. I didn't feel open-ended. I didn't. I felt like everything was very conclusive into where all of our characters were going. And while, honestly, I truly think they could have kept going for more, Sometimes it's best to cut it off as best as you can. And Sex Education Season 4, I think in the end of the day, remains to be one of the best shows on Netflix and showcases why we need more shows like this. So with all that said, I'm going to give Sex Education Season 4 an A-. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. Let me know again who your favorite character is from Sex Education. Mine still ends up being Maeve, but I do love Ruby and specifically Mimi's performance in that. And Eric is just always a standout, never really frustrating me, only a couple times here and there. But of course, guys, thank you so much again for watching this. And of course, until next time, stay classy.